good afternoon, uh, everybody. I am uh, Michele Titarelli. I am a PhD candidate, uh, and I work uh, with the University of Siena. And, uh, Hi, good afternoon to everybody. I am Yolanda Iacono, and uh, I am postdoc at the uh, University of Siena. And uh, Michele and I, we will work to Robotics and Learning Technologies Lab from University of Siena. And this afternoon, we will present you some of our robots that we have in the lab. Yep. So uh, our research lab, it's, uh, as you can see, uh, came from uh, uh, the Department of Social, Political, and Cognitive Sciences. But uh, we are a, a multidisciplinary team. Uh, for example, I have a, a different background from Yolanda. Yolanda, she's a psychologist, and I'm an interaction designer. And uh, I think that it's so important for uh, to, to have uh, this kind of X designer team where we connect uh, a lot of different uh, uh, figures, such as uh, engineers, uh, such as web designers. So we combine everything to, to reach uh, uh, the, the best work that we can uh, do. And uh, the head of uh, uh, our uh, laboratory is uh, Patrizia Marti, our professor. And uh, we want to thank you, Patrizia, that uh, give us the opportunity to be here at Campus Party and uh, to talk to you about our work. And uh, our research is focused uh, principally on the design development and evaluation of, uh, in different contexts. And uh, we love our motto that, that is from leisure to work, from tools to service. Now I'll leave uh, the word to my colleague uh, Yolanda. And uh, please, Yolanda. OK, so we can start with the presentation and we will present our robot. The robot that we can use in our lab are particular kind of robot. When we think about robot, we think about social robot. What does it mean, social robot? Social robot are a particular kind of robot that usually we, they are created to interact with the people, to establish a relation. And uh, in the field that we can use is educational field, context therapeutic. We use with the elderly people, also with the children with different kinds of disability. The first robot that I will show you is Iromec. Iromec is the acronym of Interactive Robotic Social Mediator as Companion, and it was developed during a project, European project, that he started in 2006 and he finished in 2009. The main aim of the, of the project it was to allow the children with disability to play. Why, why play? Because the play is the most important activity that children they have to do during the early stage of their life. Through the play, the children are able to learn, are able to know, are able to improve their ability and their capabilities. Iromec is a robot that's able to play with the children. It was developed especially for children with autism, for, aut for children with motor impairment in wheelchair, for children with uh, different kinds of cognitive disabilities. The robot can play different kinds of games. For example, cause and effect games, symbolic play, or collaborative play. And the games, they were developed according to the International of Functional Classification for Disability. They were developed by uh, World Health Organization, the version uh, related to young and children. What is Iromec? I can show you a video when you can see the main features of Iromec. Audio? Thank 
Iromech is a mobile robotic platform that is able to move in the space, to follow the children that they're moving in the space. And Iromech can move in an autonomous way or just playing with a JPEG, go, um, yes, joystick. Iromech is, we have a platform that has on his so ultrasound sensor and uh, red uh, sensor, infrared sensor that are able to recognize the child in the space. It means that Iromec stop at certain distance to the children and also we have a, uh, the up part of Iromec is made by two different parts. We have a head that has a graphical user interface that was developed according to the main needs of the children, especially with children with autism. And uh, we have the main part, the main screen of Iromec, that you can see the main features of Iromec. When Iromec was designed, it was, we were thinking about how we can design a, a robot that can engage with the children and to establish a relation to play with the children. We designed uh, an image in a, like an animal that can engage in a relation with Iromec with the children. Iromec was tested in a different country because during the project, they were, they were developed seven copies of Iromec. Two of these, they are in Italy, one of these in UK, two of these in UK, and one are not also in the Netherlands. The main aim of the field trials that we conducted with the children with the autism, especially with the children with autism, it was to allow, to help the children to develop their skills. I don't know if you have any confidence with the children with autism or with the children with different kinds of disabilities. Usually, the main problem for children with autism is establish a relation with another person because they are, their disability is, uh, is, they have a problem in social interaction, in the language, and especially in thinking. The main problem is, of course, the social interaction. Usually, they don't allow to you to play with them they start to prefer to play alone. And uh, it was difficult sometimes to introduce Iromec in the session. I show you now some video that we did during our trials that we di I did in UK during my PhD. And uh, we, I started, we started a study with the different children with autism. And uh, in this case, before start the video, is a children with autism and the problem in interaction. As you can see, he wear the ear defenses. This is typical sometimes for children with autism because they are really sensitive to the sound, to the noises, to the smell. And the children used to come in the session to play with Iromec with the ear defenses. The first game that you can see in this video is a really simple play scenario. Is, uh, the name is of this scenario is turn taking. The aim of the play is to allow the children to learn about to wait, about the causes and effective game. In this video, I ask the children to stay in one place and to stay small, uh, to stay in one place and to wait Iromec until he goes to him and until the. The, the robot is able to recognize the children. As you can see, I used a piece of paper yellow because sometimes the children with autism, if I say, okay, stay here, they start to move around. But if you use a sitting prompt, they stay in a one place. Now I am taking the, play, the, the yellow card with me and I say, okay, this is my place, I'm waiting. The aim of the play is he has to send to me Iromec and wait. 
wait until the robot reach me and until the robot recognize me. And in that case, I turn around the robot and send to, the, to him again. As you can see now, he didn't wait. He came to me again. It was difficult. This is almost the first session of the, 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 the study. We did a long-term study for six months and uh, for two weeks. Uh, each time the children play with Iron Man and then other robots. As you can see now, the children is really attractive from the face. It was amazing also this because sometimes the children with autism, they are really difficult for them to interact with the people and to look at people in the face because our face is a, do a lot of expression. And for children with autism, it's really difficult to understand sometimes also the, smi the smile, the fear, and they are really difficult in this. In the other video, we can see another scenario. The name of this game is Make It Move. In this scenario, I ask the children to clap his hand to, to, do, uh, to allow the robot moves. If you clap your hand one time, the, rob the robot goes straight. If you clap your hand two times, the robot goes left. If you clap your hand three times, the robot goes the right. And if you want to stop the robot again, you have to clap your hand one time. As you can see now, also here, it's really difficult for the children with autism to understand the rule of the game. He's not really able to understand the rule, but he's able to imitate my movement, my behavior. I have to do before and after he can repeat. And I have to repeat again until he is able to do the, the behavior and the task. continuously look at the face of the robot. Let's play just one time again. Go. Straight. Okay. Looking. Okay. Good now you boy. see. Good boy. He was able to clapping. I didn't see. I didn't times. say nothing. And he's clapping his hand alone. This is a good point. We show the video also to the teacher. And sometimes the teacher say, okay, no, this is a really one, good two. achievement for the, chil for the children. They usually are not Good. able to take, pay attention to the rule of the game. But we know that it takes time, of course. Our, our uh, study is it's necessary to start and to do a really long-term study until we are able to achieve a really objective, or educational objective. Okay. Iromec, as I told before, it was a European project that he started in 2006, and we were really different, different partners. In the consortium, we, we uh, were seven, almost eight partners, and we were two, three universities, University of Hertfordshire in the UK, University of Italy, uh, of Siena, University of Valle d'Aosta, also in Italy. And we had also different uh, partners in uh, Profactor, uh, Austrian Razor Center, and uh, also uh, Robosoft and uh, Villans in, uh, in the Netherlands. Okay. I just want to add uh, the fact that uh, uh, you see the screen that it's on the top uh, of the Aromac. Uh, Aromac is provided by different covers, mm -hmm. and there are also covers with FAR ma made with the smart textile. So uh, here in the design, uh, uh, we don't use just the flexibility of the software, but also about the, the hardware part, the part of the design, the physical one. And uh, it's interesting because we can add also the tactile experience on gaming of, uh, of the, the children. And I think it's yeah. so important also to, to add these things. Okay, so the second robot that we present to you is Paro. I don't know if anyone knows. Paro is a baby seal robot designed by Takanori Shibata in uh, Japan. 
And uh, we started a collaboration, our professor Patrizia Marti started a collaboration with Shibata long time ago. Patrizia Marti was the first person that brought in Italy Paro. And uh, we use Paro as a therapeutic object, as a therapeutic robot, a therapeutic tool, especially for children with, uh, also with autism, for, for elderly person. Iron Man, uh, Paro, sorry, is a babysit robot that is covered by a fur, soft fur. And under his, uh, his soft fur, we are, we are a different kind of sensors. Sound sensor, pressure sensor, and light sensor. Paro is uh, able to reply, to respond to the people. Is, uh, if you hug it, if you stroke it, he replied to you in a certain way that is appropriate way. I will want to show you a video now where Patrizia Marti was uh, interviewed by the, uh, Angelino and uh, she explained and uh, you can see also how and where, when and where we use Paro in, with the elderly person. Paro is a baby seal robot. It is covered by uh, sensors and it reacts to strokes, basically. If you hug it or if you stroke it, it's extremely lively and you can hear the sounds, the typical call of a baby seal, and uh, it moves the head, it moves the eyes, so it's, it's like a real pet. The robot can learn, so I train the robot in a certain way and it has a certain character, a certain behavior, but if another person trains uh, another robot in a different way, the robot has a different character. So this is quite amazing to see because in a population of ro different robots, you, you can have, you can see very different kind of behaviors. I use Paro with people who have um, relational disturbances. So elderly people with dementia, with Alzheimer, or children, autistic children, children with Down syndrome, or children with uh, learning disturbances. Pet therapy is so important uh, for people who have uh, problems related to relationship, to establish a relationship with another person. But Paro is a robot, so it doesn't have all the inconveniences of the pet therapy. <laughs> An animal can, is dirty, so you need to, to clean it. And the fur uh, can cause uh, allergies and there is a problem of control. So even if you train a dog or a cat in a proper way, you cannot be sure that it will react as you expect. I had a patient in an home care who was extremely aggressive uh, because of the dementia and was ag aggressive with the other uh, guests of the, the home care. And with Paro, we were able to reduce for six months uh, the, the pharmacological uh, protocol. When I see the eyes of children, of the elderly, happy, because of the robot, because they enjoy uh, together with the robot. This is the, the best answer that I can have from my work. So, this is Paro, and uh, you see that the robot, we use the robot with the elderly person, with the real user, because from our point of view, the robot has go out from the university. We had to use in, uh, with elderly in nursing home, and the nursing home that you saw, you saw in the video is a nursing home in Siena. 
and we still using Paro. Now we all, we finished the project with the, our student here, Julia Perugia, that she has discussed as master thesis uh, at the end of September, to use Paro with the elderly people to improve their ability, narrative abilities. As you can see from the video, in in the relation with Paro and the the, the elderly has a completely different behavior that has is uh, when he is, for example, in a living room during the, inside the nursery home. We saw Paro to, able to change the behavior, able to allow the people to interact with them. And sometimes elderly persons are, for example, in a living room, they don't talk to each other, they stay close to each other, but they don't talk they don't turn uh, their head to look at the other one. With the paro, the ability of the people is completely different. They start to talk each other, and also they start to think and also to, to talk about their problem. For example, during a session with the elderly, some people say to us, oh, he has a headache like me. This is really important because it means that the people are able to talk. For, sometimes, they, for example, the doctor or the educational therapist, they are, not, they are not able to achieve the people. But in this case, it's, it's if, if it's possible to reduce also the pharmacological treatment uh, through the social, ro social robot, it's important. Yep. This is the partners that collaborated in this project that is still active. And uh, now we will present the last one. It's a, a company project. It's a, a European project that we started in collaboration with a big consortium in 2011. And the, the aim of, the, uh, of a company is to facilitate independent living of elderly people at home. But from our point of view, from our uh, point of view, from a company point of view, the main challenge, the major challenge is to explore a rich and natural way to interact with the robot. The robot that we can use in a company is K-Robot. That is a mobile robot equipped with an arm, really big arm, that has three fingers that are able to grasp an object and he's, in his body has a different kind of sensor that are able to detect the, an object, and uh, also has a camera in the, his head, we can say, that is able to detect the environment and to have an image in 3D dimension. The robot can detect, fetch, carry, and manipulate an object. K-Robot is also part of a big environment, I have to say, that is an intelligent environment that is made by sensor. Because in our consortium, in a company consortium, we are different partners. K-Robot was developed by Fra IPA Fraunhofer Institute in Stuttgart. And the main uh, the project coordinator is the University of Hertfordshire in UK. And uh, we have also the Netherlands uh, as partner. Uh, we have uh, Zurich University. And this moment, we are starting the test robot, K-robot, with a really elderly person that comes to the university and uh, in an apartment created for a company project with the sensor. And uh, we use the robot in a different kind of scenario. How we can control K-robot? We can control K-robot through a tablet. And uh, this part of the project, it was our work in a, a company. The graphical user interface was designed by University of Siena. And uh, basically, we designed all the part of the interface. Now, I leave the, uh, the word to Michele that he was the main part of the team that he worked in this part of the graphical user interface. Uh, yeah, in drawing this, uh, drawing, in designing this, uh, and drawing also because uh, we like also to draw before we start to use computers as designers, uh, we start to create a, a mask that you can see here, 
this mask uh, help uh, the help uh, allow the the user to to feel to be inside the head of the of the robot of the care robot because uh, uh, the, the the image that you can see uh, behind the mask is the real image captured from the camera that it's inside the care robot so this uh, allow us to create also uh, to 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 put the user inside the same environment that uh, the robot is exploring. Uh, the graphical user interface that we created is really, really simple because with the elderly people, we, we want to create something that, uh, that needs to be uh, really simple, not just in the gesture and the interaction, but also you can see uh, these dots that are really bigger, that are... Uh, the, 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 the text uh, on the uh, action possibilities are very, very bigger. You can see, for example, uh, some technician things very quickly. You can see, for example, that there are the dishes on the left. Uh, you can see a little bit of transparency. The opacity is lower than the, uh, the, than the uh, action possibility that you, that you are using because we want to enlarge as possible the view of the, of the, the screen that it's on the back. And then uh, another important aspect, you can see on the left uh, at the bottom, uh, there is uh, a switch uh, because uh, in this project uh, we uh, created two different GUI, that uh, graphical user interface, the interface that you can switch, uh, is the person view and the robot view. The robot view, uh, it's important, uh, is that one. Uh, it's when uh, the robot is out from the room that where the person uh, is, that, uh, the person that controls him with the tablet. Uh, the person can switch uh, this view to the uh, person view where uh, he can interact uh, with the same action possibilities, uh, the, 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 the things that the robot can do uh, in, in a very normal way, simply way. Uh, but uh, we focus a lot on the, on the second part. Now I'll show to you uh, really quickly a video, just for show to you uh, the design that we created for, the, for this GUI. Yeah, you can see. Uh, oops, I made a big mistake. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, I was, you can see the three different uh, uh, dots, the three different action possibilities. You can see that water, uh, the dot is bigger than the other ones. This is because uh, the, the elderly person uh, are, uh, have a, lot, a stronger uh, uh, they're uh, a lot uh, uh, interested, sorry for the word, uh, for my bad English, uh, uh, to the habits. So it's so important to show, uh, for example, uh, the water, because uh, uh, this is the, 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 the action possibility that, that the person use uh, more time. So uh, more a person use uh, one action possibility, more is bigger inside the GUI. Uh, you can see, oops. Uh, Again, my fault. And uh, I'm sorry, some problems uh, of interaction. And this is, OK, you can see that they are floating, that they are uh, a transparency. Here you can see that uh, after the first choice, on the left side, uh, uh, the person uh, in this example choose the coffee. Uh, he can choose between uh, the normal coffee, the espresso, the long, uh, the other things. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, uh, the user needs just to drop inside this big plate, we call it big plate, the, the, the things that he want to choose. And then there is this little shaking. And uh, if you click uh, in the GUI, uh, you can see that the coffee is running. So it means that the robot is making this operation, and uh, on the left you see that uh, the coffee disappear. Okay, uh, with the uh, with the GUI, uh, the, the GUI is not just the mask, the basic mask that you that uh, I have shown you before. 
Here we have, for example, the basic. But the basic is just something, uh, uh, it's just the, the normal mask. Uh, it, uh, it works just when uh, the robot is making something or when uh, he has not moving. We want to, uh, in, uh, to increase the, the empathic relation between the robot and the person via tablet. Uh, for, uh, for each this task, we use the six expression of the Ekmans. I don't know how many uh, person knows this six expression. They are uh, anger, disgust, fear, joy, sadness, and surprise. These are six expression of the face uh, that are recognized from uh, all the cultures. All the people can recognize this, uh, this expression. So uh, we try to, to, to create this sympathetic relation in uh, two ways. We created to design, uh, uh, we, we designed two strategies. The first one with the graphical filters where you have only the basic mask and there are some changing, changing uh, on the video below. So we change, for example, the blur, the saturation, some uh, effect on the video. In the dynamic mask, uh, you, you can see here shape changing a site. Uh, we try to recreate in this mask the, the expression of the, of the face. So, for example, as you will see later, and I leave uh, uh, to Yolanda later, uh, you will see that, for example, in, a, in, a, in some, uh, when something happens, the, the robot can understand what is happening and it can react. So it can react, for example, uh, later you will see a plant that falls down and the robot will be sad about this fact. Uh, I show to you okay. no, no, the video and uh, uh, then we made also an evaluation part, but I'll leave uh, this part uh, to my colleague. Okay, uh, just to, okay, we designed the two different strategy, okay, to, the, to, to understand if it's possible and which way we can create in the, an empathic relation with the robot, how an elderly person can be engaged and how it's possible to establish a relationship, an em empathic relation through the via tablet with a, with a robot. We started an evaluation, we conducted a survey, and uh, we designed two different scenarios. In which scenario we, de we didn't use a dynamic mask, we used a just a static mask. In the other one, we used the dynamic mask, we changed the, f the, the, high the high sight and also the graphical filter. We show you now two different videos, and uh, we can see the difference between them. Yep. Okay. Each video has a story. We have a lady, and we have the robot. The lady is able to control the robot via tablet, and we have two. We have the same video. No? Okay, basically, during the evaluation, we asked the people, the subject, to, we, to watch one video, the static or the empathic mask, to reply a questionnaire to us, and after to see the other video and to fill in the same questionnaire, and after that to compare the two videos that he, he saw. Have you seen any difference in this video? No one can reply me, no difference? No? Sorry? Darkness. Darkness. In, which, in which video? In the right one. So, the first one on your left side, it was the static mask. And the other one, it was the expressive dynamic mask. We used it in, the, in this video the graphical filters. And we asked in our question to the people, have you seen any, any difference between the, the two videos? And the people start to reply us, yes, we saw. 
which one is the darkness. The darkness, it means that the robot maybe is tired and he cannot do the action that I asked him to do, turn it off the light, because I am tired and I cannot do for you. Indeed, the lady at the, at the end of the video is saying, okay, it's still darkness, I can leave the, the, the light, turn it on. In the second one of the video, yep. we, we saw another scenario. We designed four different scenarios. In this case, we have the same environment. We have an elderly lady and the robot. The window in the living room is open. A strong airflow comes in and something happens. In this case, the elderly person can see what's happening in their, in their environment through the eyes of the robot. Okay, so any difference now? The mask is changing, changing the shape with the, for the, it means that the robot is feeling something, it's, he got to, he sent something, he got to the windows, he saw the plants fall down, he becomes sad. During the evaluation, we start to ask the people, are you able to understand the empathic concern, the perspective? Are you able to take the perspective taking of the robot? Basically, because we did evaluation also to understand if the people are able to take taking the ro perspective robots. I can understand what the robot feel. How I can understand? Through the mask, it's really simple because I can feel what the robot feeling. And if I am in another room, maybe if I, if I am an elderly person and I am in a living room and the robot is somewhere in the house and something happens, but I don't know what's happened, for example, in the kitchen, I can show to the, to the, through the tablet and through the eyes of the robot what's happened and also understand the feeling of the robot, for example, for the fall down. At, le and, uh, at the end of the evaluation, uh, we found that the empathic mask as on the Howard subject, had an a positive impact because they were able to understand and the empathic so concern and also to understand the perspective taking of the robot. From strategy design of strategy point of view, we had a problem with the first scenario, scenario that you, see you saw before, because the, for the people, it was really difficult to understand the difference between the static and empathic version of scenario. We are still working on it. We are trying to find the, the best solution to design and to find how the people can interact with the robot and the, also during an empathic mask. Yep. This is the partner of the company project. We have the University of Hertfordshire that is the coordinator of the project. We have uh, University of Amsterdam, University of Siena, Madopa, that is a center for uh, elderly person in France, University of Birmingham. Yeah, uh, the only thing that, that I can add to this is that, uh, as Yolanda says, I want to remark that, uh, that the, the dynamic mask uh, uh, enhances the feeling. Uh, we, in the survey we put, uh, for example, a question like, uh, did you feel involved with the robot? And we receive a lot of positive feedback about that. Uh, maybe it can appear, the, the shape of the mask uh, uh, can appear, um, it's, it's really hard to, to express an emotion without the use of the pupil, for example, in a graphic part, because the distance and the difference of uh, the, the, the angle of the eyebrows, for example, related to the pupil, give to you, uh, that uh, helps you to recognize uh, the expression. 
but uh, it's really hard also to to you to to create a screen that it's empty and uh, where you can uh, see uh, what happened behind uh, the mask. So uh, that's all, okay. and uh, that's we want to project. thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. <laughs> and if you want uh, more information about uh, the oh. project, you all can. the project, you can uh, uh, go to the to, to this website. It's the website of our professor Patrizia Marti, and uh, you can use also the QR code. If, if you, you have, have any uh, question. Thank you. Thank you.